the vast open country of the tropics, a patchwork of trees and shrubs on a bed of grass, a place to deluge and drought. It dominates the continent as the center of our world and of all the world's habitats. This one supports the Earth's most famous wildlife, the home of the safari. This is Savannah. Hello guys, welcome back to another video. So, with the starting lines and the video title, you might have clicked the image of the video as well. And if still not, then you need to watch this video till the end because in today's video, we are going to talk about the details of the Savannah Desert and its wildlife. So without any further delay, let's start the video. So, as we know that the tropics of our planet have two habitats that are instantly recognizable to us. The first of these is the tropical rainforest, and the other, much drier one, is that of the tropical savanna. So, when many of you think of savanna, you probably think of vast, uninterrupted plains of grass, such as the Serengeti, or often shown on our TV screens in wildlife documentaries. But savanna is, in fact, a mix of trees, shrubs, and grasses. Savannas are really transition zones between the verdant rainforests of the tropics and the parched hot deserts of the subtropics. Where in the world do we find savanna? Well, if we apply the strict definition of a natural mix of trees, shrubs, and grass, then they can occur in temperate and subtropical latitudes, as well as the tropics. But these tropics, in South America, Australia, and above all, Africa, region by region, then savannas are found in the Americas, in isolated strips in southern Mexico, some Caribbean islands, in particular Cuba, and in southern Florida, where in fact the Everglades are a flooded form of savanna. South America has more extensive savannas, including most of the central part of Venezuela, while central Brazil has vast areas of broken woodland, in what is known as the Cerrado. The Brazilian savanna is the most biodiverse in the world, with an estimated 800 tree species alone. Skipping over to Australia, and we find extensive parts of the outback in the form of broken woodland, shrubland, and grassland that meets the savanna definition. As a wide transition zone spreading across the north and east of the island continent, between the coastal forests and the parched desert interior, species transition gradually from tropical varieties in the north to more temperate forms in the south in the area shown on this map. And last but not least, we come to Africa, the place that comes to mind with most of us when we hear the word savanna. This continent is dominated by the biome extending in a wide band across West Africa through to Ethiopia in the northeast. This band follows tight lines of latitude, classically representing the transition between the equatorial forests of the south and the vast Sahara Desert to the north. In East Africa, the presence of wide plateaus across the equator leads to drier conditions and the formation of the most famous of all savannas, the Maasai Mara of Kenya and the Serengeti of Tanzania. South of the equator and the savanna spread out around the south of the Congo rainforest to cover southern Africa from coast to coast, with only the deserts of the southwest being exempt. The wet and dry seasons across these regions extend into Madagascar, where, as always with this island of unique biodiversity, a savanna exists here in a form unlike any other. Species of trees, shrubs, and grasses vary by continent. Hence, no mention of the savanna can go without its greatest claim to fame, that of huge volumes of large mammalian species found in particular in that continent of the safari. Africa. The presence of extensive grasslands provides feeding grounds for vast herds of elephants, rhinos, giraffes, wildebeest, zebras, buffalo, and antelope. And with such herds, predators follow in the form of lions, cheetahs, hyenas, and African wild dogs. Nowhere else on earth do we find such a rich quantity of large animals, and this, more than anything, is perhaps the savanna's greatest gift. On every continent except Antarctica, the most famous grassland is the African savanna. Savanna animals are some of the most popular animals to visit, from which few are elephant, giraffe, zebra, lion, gazelle, leopard, hyena, wildebeest, cheetah, and many more. There are two seasons in the savanna. The rainy season can bring over four feet of rain to the savanna. The dry season during the savanna only gets a couple of inches of rain. During the rainy season, it is easy for animals to find water during the dry season. Many animals must migrate to another area to find water. Some animals are able to find water in plants that store water. The baobab tree is a savanna plant that stores water. They can store 30,000 gallons of water in their trunks. 
Even though elephants migrate to find water, they also have the strength to dig into the baobab tree for water. Their tusks help them tear open the tough bark and suck the water from inside. The dry season can also bring many fires to the grasslands. The savanna is a large area of land and has lots of space. Large animals can live there. Animals that run fast also live in the savanna, such as cheetahs, which are the fastest land animals. It is a predator and uses its speed to help it catch its prey. The cheetah can run up to 70 miles per hour. The speed limit for a car on I-5 is 65 miles per hour. The next time you are on the freeway, remember the cheetah can run faster than your car going 65 miles per hour. Another predator that lives in the savanna is the lion. Lions are powerful predators. They are large, strong, and can run very fast. Baby lions are called cubs. Lions live together in groups called prides. Lions do not really hunt just for themselves. They hunt for all the lions in the pride, especially the cubs. Notice how camouflaged these lions are in the grass because there are not many trees in the savanna. It does not provide shelter for the animals. Many animals will stay together in groups to protect the young from predators. Coming to the next, same as with elephants. Elephants can stay together in groups called herds. Zebras stay together in groups called dazzles. It is called a dazzle because of the dazzle effect created by a group of running zebras. The zebra stripes help to protect it from predators. When all the zebras keep together as a big group, the pattern of each zebra stripes blends in with the stripes of the zebra around it. This is confusing to a lion who sees a large moving striped mass instead of individual zebras. The lion has trouble picking out any one zebra to attack. Zebras, though, are not confused by these stripes. Each zebra has a slightly different pattern of stripes, like fingerprints. This helps the zebra to recognize each other. A mother zebra can keep track of her foal in a dazzle of zebras because she knows the strike pattern of her baby. The giraffe also lives in the savanna. The giraffe is the tallest of all land animals. This helps it to reach high up into the treetops to get leaves for food. The giraffe has a very long tongue, 18 to 20 inches. The long tongue allows the giraffe to reach around and pick leaves while avoiding the tree sharp thorns. Giraffes also has excellent vision. Its height and vision helps it to spot predators from a distance. Other animals such as zebras, antelopes, and wildebeest often stay near the giraffe to take advantage of their ability to see predators. They are the early warning system of the savanna. A newborn giraffe is already six feet tall. That is the height of a grown man. And they can stand up within the first 30 minutes. A giraffe heart is very large because it has to pump blood up its long neck to its head. A giraffe's heart is 2 feet long and weighs 25 pounds. Compare that to your own heart, which is just about the size of your fist. Can you remember? These were a few animals about which we discussed in the video. If you want to know more about the rest of the savanna animals, then mention for a part 2 request in the comment section. So, this is it for today's video. Which information of this video did you like the best? Tell us by commenting and mentioning your thoughts and opinions in the comment box. And with this, if you like the video, then you know what to do. Like it, share it, and subscribe to the channel for more such interesting and informative videos. See you in the next one. Till then, take care. Thank you for watching.